Hello and welcome to the Engage Brain Podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by Color Tinted Glasses. Are you colorblind? How do you know? We'll search for the Ishihara color test plates right now and then come back. All right. So did you get a lot of questions wrong? Then these glasses are for you. Color Tinted Glasses filter visible light to compensate for your deficient photoreceptors. It doesn't matter if your green, green or M cones are shifted to the right or your red or L cones are shifted to the left. Our cl- glasses use patent pending technology to filter out light between where your L and M co- cones are close to overlapping to give you more distinct green and red perception. With color tinted glasses, you'll be able to use more than the brightness and positioning of the lights at a stoplight. Color tinted glasses see the whole spectrum. Last year, the dress that blew up the internet was a shiny moment for vision researchers and others who study color perception. Finally, the general public was asking, why do I see colors differently from my friends? And the scientists were more than happy to oblige them. Today, Claudia Amaral and I speak about color perception, its similarities and its differences across individual people and cultures. Am I saying the name right? Yes. All right. I want to make sure I say everyone, uh, everyone's name right. So this is only the third time I've been uh, talking with someone, and uh, every time is a little bit different. Uh, but we're talking about color perception today. That's uh, right. And can you tell me how you got interested in color perception? Um, so I was in I was taking physics last semester, mm-hmm. and we were doing a study about uh, um, an experiment about visual perception, not in colors per se, but like different. And my lab partner was like, oh, you should check out this video. So after we finished, she showed me a video. Um, it's a BBC document, or a long documentary called mm-hmm. Do You See What I See? And it's um, talking about like color perception and differences that exist like among pe- like, different in different cultures and among individuals themselves. And she forwarded it to the last part um, where it, it talked about a study about color differences in color perception that was done in Namibia studying the Hemba tribe um, and people from the, like this culture like and difference to like Western cultures they have they tend to have like five terms for different colors versus like in the Western cultures where it's mostly like 11 words and this um, um, affected how they like sorted different colors mm-hmm. so in the task they showed them like different like a series of like different colors um some of them were like most of them were similar and there was one different and they had to choose which one was different and they had a more difficult time telling apart um the blue from like the greens because they have a a term for both of these colors Mm -hmm. but they they had more they had an easier time telling apart two different kinds of greens because they have two different terms for that and that got me interested. I was like, wow, I can't believe that, like, language, like, that just, like, affects how you see colors. And, like, um, that got me interested in seeing whether um, this difference would be seen in, like, different cultures, like, whether it was just not this group that was different, but other ones. And also my, just, like, I have, like, a general interest in cultural psychology. I took the class okay. two years ago, and um, I just, I thought it was, like, a great topic. So when you mentioned, like, we were doing research, it just popped in my mind. Yeah. Well, that's great. So uh, are there any other interesting findings that you've come across in your uh, research so far? Um, I found it really interesting that in areas, geographical areas that were close together, there were similarities in preference for color. Mm -hmm. There was one study by Miho Saito, and that studied, like, um, subjects from Japan, China, and Indonesia. And they gave the um, the subjects a task where they had to... um, they showed them the color wheel and they had to choose their three favorite colors and their three least favorite colors and they had to say why and although there were differences in like individuals between individuals and between people of different countries um mo- there was a general preference for the color white and they stated a reason like the reasons for it like the most common ones were like that it was pure and like reminded them of cleanliness and it also got me thinking oh maybe like why this happened like it didn't they said they need to research that but I was wondering like if it has to do with like values from that culture and like how to language I was wondering how the language also plays into that um so that's also something that I would like to keep like researching yeah that's really interesting I like think of like the white knight or uh I don't know other 
different terms where you're using white to like just uh, describe purity, um, kind of like religious uh, ceremonies where you dress in white. And yeah, I guess maybe that might have to do with it. I guess it's something to keep looking at. Yeah. Um, before we go too much further, what's your favorite color? My favorite color is blue. Blue. It's always it's always kind of changes, but it's always blue has always been there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just have to say mine's blue too, but when I was younger, yeah. it was red and black, and I think it was because I was a big Chicago Bulls fan. <laughs> That's a good reason. I always liked it because of the beach. Oh, okay. Um, I'm from Puerto Rico, so oh, I guess yeah. like, it always like reminds me of like a good time. I don't yeah. know. It's peaceful. You see it almost every day, except today because it's cloudy. Yeah, it's not always sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> um, so are the beaches really blue in Puerto Rico? They are. They're oh, very clear. Nice. Uh, I love it. I've never, never been to the Caribbean, so... Uh, but going back to the the topic here, so are there uh, any aspects of your topic uh, in color perception that you think are confusing for uh, the general public? I think there's like a general belief that the things that we see, like the colors that we see are inherent to the objects that we see and that others see the same colors in the same way that we do. But that's not always the case. The truth is like when we see and our eyes like see an object and then that is like transmitted, those images are transmitted to their brain and then they're like, um, integrated and that's like what we see and the objects themselves like the object absorbs color and then reflects other colors and that's what we see so even whatever we're seeing is not like that's not the inherent to the object and it's just a thing to think about and because everyone's brains like work differently and because like we're um, I guess socialized differently our brains well, when they like information from outside like gets there like it might be like interpreted differently yeah yeah so our eyes are different the retina and the uh, like distribution of cones and uh, photoreceptors are different across people but then we have to go more steps uh, so back into the brain back into the occipital lobe and just how that kind of shifts at every single step that we get, go through mm -hmm. because even even the like the structures are different so that's mm -hmm. already a difference but just the, all the differences that humans have like you put even more into it how like separate more how everyone sees yeah. things yeah I definitely uh, experience it on a pretty regular basis uh, trying to uh, talk to my wife and uh, say uh, like oh is this a blue shirt or a you know dark gray shirt and we never agree on what color um, something is so uh, just on a daily basis I see that difference in color perception between people yeah, that reminds me of, a few, I think a year ago, like, there was this thing on Facebook the where, dress. like, the dress, like, yeah. what color is a dress? And, like, a huge, like, controversy over it. And even I would, like, flip it, like, f flip my phone a certain way, yeah, and it right. would look a certain color. So even that, like, even on a daily basis, we come across, like, differences. Yeah, I think, uh, like, the one-year anniversary, there was another one going around. I can't remember what it was like mm -hmm. uh, for the, like hashtag dress 2.0 oh yeah uh, but it was uh, something totally different I should look at it maybe I'll, I'll try to see if we can put it on the uh, tumblr uh, engage brains tumblr where uh, this podcast will end up uh, but uh, <laughs> something I want to uh, yeah. have you uh, once you posted your uh, buzzfeed quiz on uh, the buzzfeed community have you uh, received any response from any of your friends or anyone I have some of them have been like, oh, I saw that you did like something, and I was like, wait, how did you come across that? And yeah. like, they thought it was really interesting in general, and like, were surprised by like the facts that they um, ran across. Yeah. So that was pretty like interesting, and I'm hoping that I'll keep getting more responses as t as time goes by. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that uh, going forward, there's any kind of new or exciting uh, areas of research in, in color perception? I definitely think there is. Um, I did not come across a lot of, like, I did not come across research at all about how, like, people who are bilingual, like, perceive color, especially mm -hmm. if there's, like, differences in, like, color terms Different between languages. cultures. Like, I thought that would be a really, that's a really interesting, like, area of research to look at. Also, at how, um, at how color affects behavior. I saw a study where it was saying that when certain teens were wearing black like they were given more penalties of course this is only with just one uh -huh. study and i was interested in seeing like if you know if this is replicated what findings are seen but also does this apply to any other colors like will a certain color be perceived like bring different like ideas or like feelings or different associations for different people mm -hmm. i think that's also like an area of research that is interesting um additionally there were some it was found that like the pattern of gender differences between in, in color preferences was similar between different um, cultures 
and I was wondering why, like, if this has, like, a certain purpose, like, evolutionarily, I think that would also be of interest to research. Yeah. Yeah, the, going to the color jerseys, uh, I've also saw some research that said that red teams win more often than, like, any other colored jersey. Really? I, I don't know, like, if red is power, or, mm-hmm. or if there's other, some sort of association with that. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then, uh, is there any, well, like, one uh, last really important thing that you think uh, you'd like to mention about color perception? I think that um, it's important to mention that although there are a lot of differences in people and between cultures, there's also like individual differences. No two people in a, um, a single culture will see things as similarly. At the same time, there are also a lot of like certain similarities between humans and um, color perception. Mm-hmm. For example, in a study I looked at, chil- like it was a longitudinal study looking at how children in different countries, I think it was um, Great Britain and Namibia, and they looked at like the progression of how children acquire the color terms, um, and before they, the children of both cultures like acquired language, there was a lot of like similarities in the, like, the errors they made in like color perception and in the way they acquired language, so it seems like in overall there are some similarities mm-hmm. too. And that get like, and people get bridged more as time goes by and as they acquire more experiences. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, wrapping up here, is there anything that you'd like to promote? Any uh, social media things, or uh, are you a, a YouTube vlogger or a Vine star? I guess um, keep on like looking at these. Uh, I would promote like looking at other my colleagues' other. Yeah. Um, BuzzFeed, BuzzFeed articles, articles. Infra- infographics. Yeah, they have a lot of like interesting facts, and also mm-hmm. because we, we the um, the research we made, like it's re- it's based on research and like um, it's facts and like well like first, so it's actual information that's real. So I would suggest looking at that. Yeah. So even though most BuzzFeed things we mm-hmm. might not trust, our BuzzFeed ones mm-hmm. are are trustful and research based. Yeah, and you can also check out the like different like there's I think links to like the articles like more mm-hmm. information if you're interested in any of these topics yeah um, oh great and then uh, the last thing i'll ask is uh we were talking before we started recording that has that come to your mind that uh, thing you saw in ecuador i have not i just remember like seeing something and it was like oh my i wonder why like this isn't like a thing in other countries but i totally forgot i know as the recording stops i'm do- totally gonna, gonna remember right to the, <laughs> but <laughs> I will get back to you on that. (laughs) Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks again to Claudia for coming in to speak with me about color perception. A very interesting talk. Uh, Afterwards, I went and looked at uh, the glasses I was talking about and found N-chroma, which are uh, these glasses that help individuals who are colorblind Uh, see uh, color uh, like uh, healthy individuals who have three fully functioning uh, photoreceptors. Uh, So that was uh, really interesting. Something that I've been uh, jamming in in this part of the, uh, this segment of the show, Jake's Jams. Uh, Jake's Jams is where I talk about things that I've been liking, things that uh, I've found interesting lately. Uh, I have to give a shout out to iTribe. iTribe was a hundred dollar eye tracker for developers uh, mostly uh, app developers uh, to be able to incorporate eye movements into apps that they have on uh, iPads or other tablets. Uh, and it's just been a great uh, part of uh, my research as I'm going forward here. Uh, so I definitely recommend spending just $100 to incorporate eye tracking into anything that you're developing or your own research. Um, iTribe, it's a company uh, out of Europe. And uh, uh, turning back to the mailbag, again, since uh, I'm recording these episodes uh, back to back to back, uh, I haven't had a chance for anyone to uh, tweet me, tweet me at Engage Brain, uh, or email me, my last name at gmail.com. Uh, and when I say my last name, I actually mean my last name, not literally my last name. Uh, so if you have any questions or you'd like me to answer something, uh, you can let me know there. Thanks again, and I'll catch you next time.